Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. So I was in Costco the other day. <laughs> oh man, I never get out of there for less than a hundred bucks. It's usually more, but I found these Hootie's peanut butter chocolate mix in individual packs. Um, my family is a pretty big fan of this mix. It comes and goes at Costco. Mostly they have it and they have it in a, in a jar. It's really the most delicious snacks, snack mix. Well, they've added to their um, inventory at Costco these two ounce packs and it couldn't resist making a treat box for it. So we got this little Velcro clothes treat box. It fits one of these two ounce packs of chocolate peanut butter mix, peanut butter chocolate mix. And we, of course, I paired it up with the elephant parade bundle. All right, let's get started. We're going to start with a piece of petal pink cardstock for the box space. And it is eight by 10. Let's move these out of here for now and get our simply score tool. This is our template for this project and the template photo will be in on the printable project sheet on the blog. If you click project details in the description below, it'll take you to the blog post and the project sheet is a clickable link underneath the embedded video. So we're gonna start on the eight inch side and we're gonna score this one at one and a quarter on the eight inch side and then rotate to the other eight inch side, score at one and a quarter. What that does is ensures that our box sides are an inch and a quarter. And that way we get a nice square box that is an inch and a quarter here and an inch and a quarter here, no matter if we cut this eight inch paper at exactly eight inches, or if we cut it a little short of eight inches or a little bit generous of eight inches, if you go at one and a quarter and then at six and three quarters. If this paper is a little short, then this side of your box is gonna be just a little short. If this paper is a little bit hair long of eight inches, then this side is gonna be a hair longer than this side. So that's why I rotate to the other eight inch side. All right, now let's pop this into the 10 inch side and we're gonna score at two and three quarters, four, six and three quarters and eight. Now we'll get a bone folder and some paper snips and we're gonna make that look like this. All right, so we've worked with the bone folder. Now you'll notice that one side is a little bit wider in the first segment than the other side. This more narrow piece right here is your flap top. So get that one in the position that's closest to you and then cut down, removing the score line. One, past this big rectangle, two score lines, the square, right? Cut off the rectangle and bevel this, removing the score line. And now you've got the little tuck flap for your box. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, so now we've got the flap of our box. Let's liberate the glue tabs for the bottom of the box here. I'm gonna cut an angle on the glue tab and straight for the side of the box. Same with this one, straight on this big rectangle, angle and remove the score line. So you get a trapezoid instead of a square, but the outside of your box is going to have nice straight sides. It'll be nice and tidy. Same thing on this side. All right, now a little detail with the corner rounder. I am going to round the tabs on my box. Let's get the corner rounder. Got my trusty We Are. I'm using the quarter inch side. And there's our box. Now let's grab some tear and tape adhesive for my adhesive placement. We've got the inside of the box. 
we're looking at the inside of the box, we're gonna add a little equal sign of tape on the glue tab. And then we want the seams to go to the back of the box. So we're gonna add some adhesive along this long panel. All right, there is the adhesive placement. And let's remove the liner from all of our adhesive. And we're gonna do the small tabs to the outside. Just square this up, get a nice square bottom. And then we'll close and sandwich that tab. Bring that to the back of the box. Seams run down the back now. And same here. Repeat for the other side. Lift the tab out and then run the front to the back. Burnish that down. There is our treat box. Super cute, isn't it? Let's make it cuter. My designer series paper, I've got two pieces here, is from the host exclusive uh, Design a Daydream 12 by 12. Now you can see I've had a lot of fun with this. It's 48 sheets, 12 by 12. Let me show you some of the designs really quick. This is available while supplies last from the annual catalog. You can only get this paper pack with host credit. So when you place an order of $150 or more, you can exchange your host rewards for this giant package of fun spring patterns. Now I'll tell you that as of right now, this is in low inventory status. So I expect that it will sell out before the um, catalog period ends. So if you like that paper, you've got your um, eye on it, place your order, exchange your host rewards for it. You won't be sorry, you get tons of great paper. And these two patterns are from that collection. This piece is for the front of your box and it is two and a half by five and a quarter. This piece is for the flap of your box and this one is one and three quarters by five and a quarter. Now the measurements will be on the principal project sheet so there's no need to scramble and write them down. Let's go ahead and round the corners of our stripe pattern so that it'll match the flap. And we're gonna adhere those with some liquid glue. Ooh, that's pretty too. Look at that. I think a little too bold for elephants, but what an interesting color palette in this designer series paper. We're using petal pink cardstock and a little bit of pool party cardstock. Uh, Designer Series paper has Blackberry Bliss. We're gonna use a layer of Blackberry Bliss. Just a very interesting color combination that's been fun to work with. Mint Macron and Pool Party, Daffodil Delight. Those are the colors in this pack. Very good color combination for your spring projects. All right, then for the flap of our box. And if you're a Blackberry Bliss fan, this paper pack is a must got some really awesome Blackberry Bliss patterns in, as you can see from the B-sides of these papers. Now, my box is going to close with a Velcro tab. I get these on Amazon. This is how they come to me. And there's six of these packs in the box. So I buy them up in bulk and then don't feel bad about using them at all because the price per fastener is pretty affordable. Um, the supplier on Amazon kind of has them in stock and out of stock, so you have, to, you have to time it right, but I'll provide a link in the description below and on the blog post. Um, these are really affordable way to close up a box. Now, you'll see that one side's more clear and one side's more opaque. So on the clear side, on the designer series paper. So we'll remove the liner from that, pop that kind of in the middle, remove the liner from the fuzzy side, which is the more opaque, the white side. Keep your pair together and then close the box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop my treat in the box. It kind of gives me something to hold on to and it's gonna give us um, some stability as we decorate the box. Let's burnish down the adhesive from that fuzzy side grabs, and then separate the two layers of Velcro. So it might help to put a little tool in there so you can lift and separate. And once you've got 
go ahead and burnish those two pieces. And now you have an adorable Velcro clothes box. Let's get some ribbon and add a big bow. I think that gifts with a big bow just feel more festive. So we're gonna use some of this pool party. Um, this is grow green ribbon from the um, January, April spring catalog. And it is the perfect match for this paper from the annual catalog. And we are going to give ourselves a nice generous kind of loopy bow here. Really make this gift look festive. If you want to save yourself a little bit of ribbon, you could take a piece that's about six inches long and tape it to the back of your designer series paper, glue your designer series paper panel on, then you'll have a strip that runs across. Then you can take the ribbon, slide under the strip, tie a bow on there, and it'll save you some inches of ribbon on the inside of your project. So just a suggestion if you're um, like to be a little bit frugal with the ribbon that'll save you about five or six inches that wraps around to the inside of the project I am just wrapping and tying today but if you're a kitchen table stamper follower you know that I often have tips especially on how to um, get the most from your ribbon and have the least waste like tying from the spool then when you cut away from the spool there's no excess that you had to cut off and throw away. When you correct the angle, clean up the edge, that's all the ribbon that you throw away. So I usually have very frugal tips for ribbon, but I just wrapped and tied this time, a big festive bow. Let's get our sample back in here and let me show you some of the pieces that I cut. Now this is Blackberry Bliss and I cut this label shape using the seasonal labels dies now this die set you might already have in your collection it's been for a long time it's this kind of medium label shape but this one is sold out and stampin up is not replacing it so it is retirement time at stampin up and the moral of the story is if you love it get it because when it sells out at this stage of the catalogs stampin up isn't uh, making more of things so you will start to see more and more things sold out and like I told you, this designer series paper is on low inventory. So get the things that you want and love while you can. Um, this oval is cut using the frame florets dies. And it's got this fancy frame oval, but it actually cuts the frame. So you get the frame piece as one die cut and the oval as another. And this is a great size oval. I'm using this a lot. This is my layer stack for die cuts. Now for my sentiments, I've got some pool party and petal pink again, and I cut this label using the stylish shape styles. This is the long skinny banner from the stylish shapes. All right, now let's go ahead and slide these to the side. And we're gonna do a little bit of inking. So just to give a bit of a sky background for our elephant in his buddy, I've got some pool party ink and a blender brush. I've also got my handy dandy mini grin paper, and my oval. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit of color to reinforce the sky around these animals. We're going to tap the brush multiple times on the ink pad and then tap on the paper. We want to see how much ink we're getting on this brush and to avoid any harshness when we start inking, we're going to get it started on scratch paper. Now we'll hold the oval and starting off the oval, we're going to move our brush in a circular motion, brushing the ink from the top edge onto the oval. And it's going to be a process of inking the brush and layering it onto the oval. 
don't forget to tap first. I did get a little bit of a harsh streak here because he didn't tap first. If you tap first, you're going to get any, um, I guess, splotches, any heavy ink off of the brush and onto the scratch paper instead of onto the piece for your project. So just be patient and layer up a little bit at a time. You can put more ink on for your sky background, but once it's on there, you're not getting it off. So the idea is just to be patient and you can kind of swoop along the curve of the oval once the brush has been cleaned off a little bit and just layer until you get a subtle ink sky background at the top of your oval. And you can see that pool party ink building and building. And when you're satisfied with your inky background, then we'll do some stamping. All right, I feel very happy with that. Let's change ink pads. Now I've got Memento Tuxedo Black and my little elephant and the mouse buddy. Let's bring this back in here so you can see what we're doing. We're gonna create a little scene with the stamps, the inking, and the dyes. I just love the variety that we get from the stamped and colored image combined with the multimedia inking effect and then the die cut grass and peanut it really gives a lot of um, texture and life to this little scene all right we got our little elephant and then let's put our mouse they're so cute together I'm gonna clear away the ink pad, get some Stampin' Blends markers. For this project, I have Smoky Slate, Crumb Cake, and Petal Pink. I'm using the light Smoky Slate in little circle strokes, and I'm gonna color my elephant in, all except for the top of the ear, the inside of the ear, and the toenails. So we're gonna get a nice base coat of ink and I'm going to take the dark smoky slate and do the top of the ear and all the little wrinkles and details that the artist drew will go back along the top of the elephant down the bottom oh I'm also coloring the tail toenails down the back leg, little shadow under, toenails again, down the back leg, and then a little bit at the underneath of the trunk and the chin. Then we're gonna take the light smoky slate and just very lightly blend that in. I have a habit of blending everything to medium we don't want to do that. We want to see that little shadow that we drew in there. So try to carefully blend without taking everything up to a medium shade. Now we're going to do our petal pink. And I'm going to start with our little mouse. We're going to do the belly, light petal pink in the inside of the ears. And then add a bit of a shadow. And it's such a light color in such a small area, really no need to blend. Then the ear and our elephant. And then a dark to make a little shadow. That's our petal pink. And crumb cake for our mouse. We're gonna do light crumb cake and fill entirely every little part of the mouse. I like to start at the face and go kind of quickly with a light coat, so that's the lightest place around the eyes and the and the, the smile like the continent uh, countenance countenance of the mouse will kind of shine that way and we'll underscore that little brightness about the face by adding a shadow down the cheek 
kind of on the uh, underneath of the arms, underneath of the ears. And then these are small areas, but the shades between crumb cake, dark and light, are a little bit further apart than the petal pink. So we just want to dab along the edge and bring those two shades together. And then the last thing I'm going to do is very carefully just touch with the dark crumb cake in the tail. It's such a small area. Just dab lightly. And there are our friends. Let's get a um, Forever Friends or Friends Forever stamp and Blackberry Bliss ink pad. We'll add a sentiment on our pool party banner. Oh, so cute and I love the Blackberry Bliss on pool party. I'm trying to just in general as I stamp and create things I'm trying to do more um, adding the sentiment on a colored cardstock stamped in colored ink. It's something that I don't do very often or very well so I'm um, always trying to kind of stretch and grow and get better at stamping and um, grow my style. Let's adhere our little friend scene to the Blackberry Bliss label. I'm going to add the dimensionals to the box and I'm going to straddle the ribbon and then that way we know that our dimensional placement is good. There is nothing hanging off the edge of the box, top or bottom, because this oval is just a wee bit uh, bigger taller than our um, box flap is wide. We're going to put that right next to the ribbon, make sure it's level and adhere. Now let's glue these two labels together. That way we can't lose them in the process, but then we're going to slide the um, project aside and do some die cutting using the elephant parade dies. All right, so there's your little banner. Let's let that dry. I have some scraps from my scrap envelopes. Now this is crumb cake cardstock and it's stamped with crumb cake ink. I used the knit together background on this. It was for a card series that I did and I had some extra pieces just sitting in the scrap bag. I'm like, well, what am I going to do with that ever? Oh, well, there's two sides to every paper, right? And so I held on to it. Well, I think it came together really nicely for the peanut. It's a very small detail, so you can skip this. You don't have to make an extra step for it, but it really did kind of add to the texture on that peanut. Now, the peanut is the cutest die ever, and it's in the Elephant Parade die set. So this is that little die and it's part of the set. We've also got the grass from Elephant Parade and we have two pieces of these little tufts of grass so we might as well cut them both at one time, right? All right, we should be able to do all of our die cutting in one pass. So let's just pop these guys on there. Oh, look at that. I think I can get them both out of that one scrap. Excellent. Give that a crank. All right, wait till you see these little peanuts. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna lift up the whole plate towards the camera so you can see. I don't know if it's gonna focus on those, but they've got now the texture. And because of that little knit together pattern, that was on it first, it really does kind of accentuate that peanut. It's just too cute. It's a simple little detail, but I'll bet you anything, you probably don't have too many peanut dies, especially little mini ones that do the texture <laughs> like this in your collection. Oh, couldn't resist the treat either. Now can you see how I just had to get those little treats from the Costco? <laughs> peanut butter chocolate mix with the elephant and those little peanut dies. Just too cute. All right, let's get this finished up. I got my project here, my die cuts, and now I'm going to reach into the button jar. So I've got just any old button here. It really, um, I had a, an assortment pack 
from a long, long time ago that I pulled these out of, but really just grab a button from the, from the button jar. It's just something that looks kind of earthy. Uh, I liked the, the brown because it kind of reinforces the peanut, the mouse. Get some of those natural, neutral color. I'm going to adhere my grass to the back of my banner and just doing it with liquid glue and then watching where it's gonna land once I put my banner on because I don't wanna cover too much of those adorable little animals. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit lower. Liquid glue gives you a bit of time to kind of adjust. I like that. So let's add liquid glue to the bottom of our oval. That way we know that we didn't put the glue too far and it's um, sticky where we've got nothing to stick to because the banners do run over the oval a little bit toward the bottom and get that on there and let that grab while that grabs we're going to run just a little bit of linen thread through our button all right i love buttons on treats i love the texture that they add i love to save and collect them but i cannot add a button to a project if it's not threaded in some way with some baker's twine or some linen thread or even some actual thread. I just think that it should be illegal to put a button on a project without thread. Now, you might not agree with me <laughs> and that's okay. And if you don't wanna thread this up, if it doesn't bother you that it's not threaded, then skip it and just use some mini glue dots. I'm using the mini glue dots that I'm going to use to attach to the project to also hold the thread. I don't tie the linen thread because it would just add to the bulk underneath there it wouldn't sit flat so i just use a mini glue dot or two or three because it's kind of a big uh, button and i just use that to secure the threads now i'm going to add that to my banner so cute i just love the texture that it adds you can um, take it or leave it it's up to you now the I think star of the show, <laughs> the teeny little peanut die. I'm going to take my mini dimensionals and I'm going to cut one in half, kind of a, a sparse half, a little bit smaller than half, and it'll be perfect to just easily pop on the back. And we've got to bump it up. It's so cute with the little peanut. And there is our friends forever. <laughs> chocolate peanut butter snack mix treat box all right you guys if you've got any questions about the project you can email me marissa at kitchen table stamper.com to shop stampin up 24 7 you can buzz over to marissa alvarez .net. when you get there click shop be sure to take a look at your um, wish list from the january april catalog and the 2022-2023 annual catalog. We are on the verge of a retirement and things are beginning to sell out and that will continue as we get closer and closer to the release of the new catalog. So take a look and place your order earlier rather than later so that you don't get left out on the things that you might like to have like this gorgeous host exclusive designer series paper. All right, you guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.